Hey everybody, this video is going to be installment two in my Etsy print-on-demand shipping series. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at setting up your shipping profiles. All right, so in the first video, I talked about your shop's shipping strategy when it comes to setting shipping pricing, your general approach to shipping, and a little bit about international orders. In this video, we're gonna take a look at your actual shipping profiles and talk about some pieces of information that are required, where you can find that information, kind of how it all works. I also have an episode of the podcast where I covered all of this shipping information, so check out podinsights.net if you're interested in the article for that podcast, and check out the POD Insights podcast on your favorite platform. It's available on pretty much all the major podcast platforms, so look for POD Insights if you want to listen to that episode as well. All right, so let's start with some basics about shipping profiles. Etsy requires you to have a shipping profile assigned to each of your listings. And you can only have one shipping profile assigned to each listing. That means if you have a listing where you're adding a combination of different products, which if you want to know how to do that for Printify or Printful, I have links to those videos in the description. You probably want to group your products together in those combination listings that can share a common uh, shipping profile that don't have vastly different shipping costs and things like that because you can only have one per listing. So where do you find your shipping profiles? Well, within each listing, of course, I'm sure you've already seen, you've got a section in each listing where you can see all of your shipping profiles, select the one you wanna use. You can even edit them from within the listing creator. But you can also get to all your shipping profiles by going to your settings on your left menu in your shop dashboard and then go to shipping settings. And the first tab is all of your shipping profiles. Now, when it comes to the differences between print-on-demand platforms, there are a couple things that, uh, that vary from one to the other. Gelato and Printful both push all their shipping profiles that they have, their default ones that they create for you, they push them all into your shop as soon as you do that integration. You make the connection between your Etsy account and your account with the platform. So as you can see here, I've got all of these Gelato shipping profiles already loaded in here, even though I don't have products listed in hardly any of these categories, they've pushed them all to my shop. So they're already here. And the same goes for Printful. I've got all the Printful uh, shipping profiles, even though I don't have products actually listed in, in most of them at this point. But Printify does it a little bit different. Printify gives you the opportunity to create a new shipping profile for each listing that you submit or that you publish or select an existing one. So just to show you what that looks like, when you're in the listing editor view and you're kind of getting ready to publish a new listing, at the very, very bottom, you have the shipping profile. And if you check the box to create a new profile, when this publishes, you will have a brand new profile that is specific to that item. It will pull forward the shipping cost and shipping method from the individual print provider for this specific item. Now you can certainly do that, but that means every time you publish an item, you're creating a new shipping profile and soon you're gonna have, you know, like hundreds or thousands of shipping profiles in your Etsy shop and each of them could be slightly different and you'll have different shipping prices all over the place based on which provider you selected for each item. Uh, so I don't personally create a new one every time. I uncheck this box if it is checked and then I use the drop down menu to select one of my existing shipping profiles. And for example, I will have one that is just for t-shirts and I will name it differently so I can tell it's not one of the default ones. So I will select t-shirts and then I will publish using that shipping profile so I'm not creating a new one every single time. You can also create a new shipping profile from scratch in your Etsy account by clicking on that Create Profile button and then do pretty much anything you want from scratch here. There are required fields in Etsy's shipping profiles. In fact, in 2021, they started requiring more information than they used to. And this is because Etsy wants to do a better job estimating the delivery times for the customer on the listing. If you ever looked at one of your listings, you'll notice that the, uh, the listing is telling the customer this is the time line for you to receive this item. And of course, it's just an estimate. It's all subject to change. But the more information they have about where it's coming from, what carrier and what method, the better they can get about estimating that delivery time for the customer. 
So let's talk about the origin postal code because that is something that used to kind of be a little bit of a pain because it was not pre-populating from any print provider and you had to get it yourself. But now on most of our print providers or platforms, the origin postal code is coming through with their default shipping profiles. Let's look at a Printful one, for example. Here's one for hoodies from Printful. If we click on edit, we'll see the details. It's got a zip code in here already. And I didn't do this. This came this way from Printful. So it's got country of origin, US, origin zip code 91355. Now the processing time is a separate story. We'll get to that in just a second. But the origin zip code should be coming through from most of your print-on-demand platforms now. If it's not, or if you need to change it, um, there are two ways you can do that. The way that I like to get the origin zip code whenever possible is to actually go to one of my orders, a past order from the provider that I'm going to use, and then look at the tracking information because the first step of the tracking usually shows the zip code. For example, here is an Etsy order from Drive Fulfillment and the tracking link is right down here. So if we click on that tracking link and open up the Easy Post tracking, we'll see the very first step is the shipping label was created and there, might be a little hard to see because it's light gray. American Fork, Utah 84003. And again, we see the same zip code when it was accepted uh, by the carrier, by USPS. So if I was using Drive Fulfillment as my primary t-shirt provider and I needed to make sure my shipping profile was up to date, I would want to use 84003 as the origin postal code. But if I didn't have an existing order or a past order from that print provider and I needed to put something in here now, then I would simply go ahead and Google Drive Fulfillment because they're going to be, you know, that print provider that I plan on using. And I would just look up their business address. And in this case, it happens to be the same zip code. Hopefully you can see that under the Google business listing, it's telling me their address here in American Fork, Utah, and the zip code is 84003. So that's actually the correct zip code based on the tracking I see in my Printify order. Um, sometimes this could be like a corporate headquarters that's different than their fulfillment center. So even if this was a different zip code, I would just go ahead and use it until I have an order where I can see the tracking information because it's pretty much the best you have to work with until you've got an order where you can see what it is for real. And so that's what I would put in here in my shipping uh, profile for the origin zip code in a pinch if I really needed it. And then as soon as I get an order that I can fulfill, or even if I order a sample, I would get the actual zip code and come here and update it. But thankfully, nowadays, we mostly don't have to do that because most platforms are pushing through the origin zip code with those default shipping profiles. Now let's talk about the processing time. This is something that is 100% up to you as the seller to make sure it's an accurate reflection, as accurate as possible of your current processing time. Now, that doesn't mean you have to change it all the time throughout the year, but it does mean you should change it when you get into busy times of year or if your production partner is experiencing delays because there's more impact coming from this than just the customer's expectation. So Etsy certainly uses this information to estimate as part of the total time to when the customer is gonna receive their order. But Etsy also uses what you have in here as your processing time when they determine whether your orders are being fulfilled on time or late. And so if you ever you know, have noticed on your Etsy uh, dashboard, when you go to your orders page, there is an indication on each order of when you are expected to ship that order. And so if you go past that timing, Etsy considers those late shipments or past due or overdue, whatever terminology they use. And that can actually affect your shop's standing and where you're placed in search and the star seller program, all that fun kind of stuff. So of course, Etsy's using that data, what percentage of your orders are shipped on time. So in my opinion, it's best to be a little bit conservative. For example, if I know that on average, my t-shirts are being fulfilled in three days, I'm still going to go with two to five business days here, unless I see that some orders are getting fulfilled in seven days, in which case I definitely want this to be two to seven business days. But if you have it as you know a little bit conservative with a couple more days than what you're seeing on average, you shouldn't have to change it too often. However, in the fourth quarter, when everybody gets super busy with all the holiday orders, I always come in here and add a couple days. Usually I'll just do it December 1st if I haven't had to do it sooner than that. I've had to bump mine up for just regular t-shirts to 10 days a couple times in the past because of how delayed production got. So it's definitely something that you should be keeping an eye on throughout the year and update it whenever it's necessary. Now, when it comes to your actual shipping profile 
um, delivery times and pricing for each country. This is where uh, there's a little bit more detail involved. Now, all of these are coming through pre-populated. This one, again, this is just one that came from Printful for uh, hoodies and sweatshirts, I think it was. So they come through with their full shipping price populated in the you know, what you're charging. They also come through with a shipping service and a delivery time. Now, some may come through with an actual shipping service selected, which are things like uh, FedEx Home Delivery, USPS First Class, uh, USPS Priority, UPS, all of those things. But some of them will come through as other, which printfuls seem to be coming through as other. And then you can select your custom estimated delivery time when you select other. This just means Etsy will use whatever you put in here instead of their data about how long that delivery service is taking if you had selected one of the preset services. So if you're using that other option, you also want to be a little bit conservative there so customers aren't expecting orders faster than what they're really going to get. Generally speaking, you can leave those the way they come through from your print-on-demand platform unless you're doing this from scratch, in which case you have to put something in there. The only thing you really need to watch out for is all of the countries that are listed. The shipping profile is the only way you have control as an Etsy seller over where your listings are displayed. If you don't list a specific country here, then your listings with that shipping profile will not display in that country that you excluded from the profile. So for example, Australia is on the list here. However, at the bottom of the list, we also have this option that's called everywhere else. And this is Etsy's way of giving you a shortcut. For example, if I wanted to have one rate for the United States and one flat rate for everywhere else, then I wouldn't need to list any of these specific countries. However, when you have this, by default, it's including every country, even if you don't list them by themselves separately with a different price. So if I really wanted to exclude Australia, for some reason, we're pretending, of course, I would have to delete both Australia and come down here and delete everywhere else. Because once I delete Australia, now Australia is going to fall under everywhere else. But once I've deleted both Australia and everywhere else, now my listings that have this shipping profile assigned will not even display to buyers who are located in Australia. So with that said, if there are any countries you do want to intentionally exclude, then you can't use that everywhere else option, which means the reverse is also true. Any country you do want to include, you have to individually list with a shipping method and shipping price. Now, in the first video in the series about my shipping strategies, I referenced what I do to come up with my balanced shipping price for the other countries where I sell in, because I do get orders from Canada and the UK and some from Australia every month, and then randomly throughout the year, I'll get them from some other countries. But I don't charge the actual flat price that the platform pushes through. You can edit any of this and save it and it will stay the way you saved it. So both for the United States as well as other countries, this is where my strategy really comes in. So even if I don't have to edit anything else about this profile, I will always come in here and make sure I've established the prices that I want to use if I'm going to be using this profile for my listings. For example, let's say I don't want to charge $7.99 as the shipping cost for my uh, hoodies, jackets, and pants coming from Printful. Let's just pretend I'm going to use this one for all my hoodies and nothing else. So I don't want to charge $7.99 for hoodies. I want to charge $5. So I'm going to come in here and change this to $5. I'm okay with the additional item charge. So I know I'm going to build a couple dollars of shipping cost into the price of my hoodies and only charge $5 for shipping because I figured out in my strategy that that's the bullseye price combination where it's a balance of an affordable, reasonable shipping charge with a reasonably competitive price of the item itself. And if you're wondering what I'm talking about bullseye price, I'll link to the first video in this series about pricing strategies for shipping in the corner as well as down in the description. Uh, so I went through my whole process of how I determined the right balance of price between the item price and the shipping price. You don't have to change it every time. You don't have to do it every time. But when the shipping price might seem high to potential customers, causing them to abandon their cart and not complete checkout, you want to go through that process to determine where's the balance point. What is your bullseye price, meaning the combination or the the difference between the item price and the shipping price. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the other countries where I sell. There are some countries where I don't really intend to be competing a lot. I might just leave the shipping cost as what it is for that country. But if let's say Canada was a country where I want to be competitive and I want to make more sales in Canada, uh, maybe I don't even want to have orders for hoodies from Canada 
fulfilled by Printful if this is what I have to charge. Maybe I want to have my hoodies going to Canada fulfilled by Printify or Gelato or somebody else, which would allow me to charge less for shipping because the overall cost is less. So I would go and do that research and then I would update my shipping profile to reflect, you know, whatever that price needs to be. So that's totally up to you and what your strategy is for your shop. In my strategy, I want to be competitive in Canada and the UK in addition to the United States. So I use uh, different print providers for those countries based on the best combination of shipping time and price. And then I just reflect that in my shipping profile. However, it's also important to reflect the value added tax or VAT that you're going to get charged in some other countries in the prices you charge here. And I, again, I covered that in the first video about shipping pricing strategies. So check that video out also if you're curious about that part of the process. All right, the only other thing I want to cover for the shipping profile is just that you do have the option to offer shipping upgrades if that's something you want to do. Now, it's a little bit tricky with print on demand because not every print on demand platform or provider offers you the option to upgrade shipping. But if you know that it is an option, you can include it or add it to your profiles. Before you actually add it here, you need to come to a different page under shipping settings. You need to go on under rates and upgrades, and you need to have this radio button here. You need to go to shipping upgrades and you need to enable that because if it's disabled, then customers still won't see upgraded shipping options during checkout. And then come back to the profile that you want to offer an upgraded shipping method in. We'll just edit my t-shirt one here and we'll add a shipping upgrade. So you can select whether it's domestic or international, select what you want to call the upgrade, or you can give it a custom name, select the service, and then enter your price for the upgrade. This is one where uh, if I do have a provider for an item that I I know they definitely offer upgraded shipping. I pretty much just charge the customer the my whole cost or an average of what it is. So if my whole cost for, you know, expedited shipping for a mug was $20, I would just put in $20 here. And most customers are not going to select that. But if you get questions from customers asking if you have it and you want to offer it because it's an option you have, this is how you would add that to that shipping profile. And then that option would show up during the checkout process for the customer. And one last thing just to call out, you do have the option of doing free shipping in one country, such as your domestic country, and then charge for shipping everywhere else. So you can do it a couple different ways, but let's, this is again, this is just the t-shirt uh, profile. So let's say I have United States here and I want to do free shipping. So that's what I've selected for United States. But if you're in a different country where my shipping cost is significantly higher, then you can add additional locations. Uh, this one I created from scratch. So this one doesn't have all the countries in there yet. But if you had one that was from Printful or Printify, it would usually would have at least some other countries listed. Um, so you would go in and you would add your other countries, say Australia. And this is where, again, I would recommend selecting other, primarily because if it is another country, I, pr I may not even know what the carrier is that they're going to use. So other is probably the best choice. I would pick a conservative time frame for delivery, such as uh, let's go with four to 10 business days for delivery, just in case I have to get it fulfilled, not directly in Australia. And then we would pick fixed price and we would actually put in the charge you know, that we want to have. So you can have a combination here. Let me get rid of everywhere else. So you can have a combination here of US or domestic free shipping with paid shipping in other countries. So that's, you know, how you would combine those two within the same shipping profile. And that's it for this video. If you have any remaining questions about shipping profiles specifically, let me know in the comments. Also, let me know if the information was helpful and hit that like button if it was helpful. And if you haven't subscribed to the POD Insights channel, you might want to hit that subscribe button so you can be notified when my next shipping video about handling shipping issues and challenges, those super fun issues that we all deal with, like delayed packages, lost packages, missed deliveries, all that fun stuff. When that video comes out, you'll get notified if you hit that subscribe button. So go ahead and do that if you haven't already. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for all your support. I really appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. See you next time. Bye.